Here's another example very similar to the first one. Do husbands and wives earn the same amount of money when they both work? Here's the data table. So we've got six couples where both the husbands and the wives work. And in the data table, we have the, av the hourly wages of the husbands in H and the wives in W. So the null hypothesis over here is that delta equals 0. There is no difference between husbands and wives' wages. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference. We haven't stated what direction the distance is. So you'll notice that I'm actually going to be less picky in this case about what we call x and what we call y and whether we do x minus y or y minus x. None of that's going to matter in this case because we have a, a bidirectional test. Making sure that you have the right notation for x and y only matters when you're dealing with a directional test. OK, so two, we're using a matched pairs. t-test, how many degrees of freedom? We've got n minus 1, and n in this case was 6, so we've got 5 degrees of freedom. And we said that alpha in this case is 5% again. 5%. Let's draw the picture. So here's the normal curve. This is a two-tailed test, bidirectional. So we're going to have two critical values. And we're going to have 2.5% over here, and 2.5% in this tail. Let's use our table. So because this is bidirectional, we're going to use the 95 confidence interval. And we said we had five degrees of freedom. So we'll go across. And our critical value is 2.57. And minus 2.57. So we're going to reject if our t statistic is in either of these ranges. And we're going to accept if our t statistic is between minus 2.57 and plus 2.57. In other words, we can make the following rule. We can say if the t statistic is greater than 2.57, then reject. Otherwise, we'll accept. So absolute t means whatever the number of t is, we're going to take the positive value of that number. So if t is, say, positive, and it's more than 2.57, then absolute t is greater than 2.57, and we're going to reject. If t is negative, and say it's minus 3, well, absolute t will be positive 3, which is more than 2.57, so we reject. So this is something that we can call our rejection rule. So the next step is to, is to calculate our test statistic. And again, we're going to have to do some math here, just some simple um, uh, subtractions and squarings. So here we've got minus 3, 17, 2, minus 2, 24, and 0. So this is the difference between husbands and wives. This is our new variable. And we're essentially just going to now test the d bar, the mean of this variable, to see if the mean's different to 0. So in order to calculate the standard deviation of, of this d, we're going to need the di squared. So we've got 9, 289, 4, 4, 5, 76, and 0. And we can sum these columns to get 38 and 882. So now we need to work out this equation over here. So we've got the sum of the di squares, that's this, 882, minus the sum of the di's, so that's this, the sum of the di's, 38 all squared. And 38 squared is 1444, divided by n, which is 6, all over n minus 1, 5. And that is going to equal 11.32.
We next need to calculate the standard error, which is SD over N, sorry, square root of N, which is 11.32 over root 6, which is 4.6. And finally, we can calculate the T statistic. T, and I'll put MP, just so you know it's matched pairs, equals D bar minus delta 0 all over the standard error of the difference. So D bar is 38 over 6, the sum of DIs over the sample size. So 38 over 6 minus 0 over 4.6, which equals 1.37. All right, let's go back. Let's try to use our rejection rule. So T equals 1.37. And absolute value t equals 1.37. Is 1.37 greater than 2.57? No. 1.37 is less than 2.57. So we're in this range over here. And therefore, in step 6, we accept the null. Well, really, it's more appropriate to say fail to reject the null.